I'm here to see the first solar airplane which is just coming from Switzerland, 600 kilometers from here. This plane has the same size as a normal plane but can only transport one person. The plane, named Solar Impulse, took off from an airfield at Peñar in western Switzerland on Friday morning. It landed at Brussels airport after a 13-hour flight. It's greeted by the applause of hundreds of people. The plane, designed for zero emission, carries 12,000 solar cells on its windspan. Andrew Borsberg, engineer and pilot, made the milestone flight alone, but he has refused to take all the credit. No, no, hey, it's, it's teamwork. You cannot imagine there's, there was, uh, I guess, about 50 people working today around this uh, project. It's so impulse. I'm not talking about all the people who helped outside. I mean, here, for example, on this airport. So it's really uh, a, a teamwork. And I think what was great today that this teamwork really worked extremely well. Uh, when I fly, there are people in the mission center who uh, do the meteo, meteorology uh, forecasts, uh, the coordination with the ATC, all simulations we need to, to try to uh, uh, see w what the airplane will be uh, uh, facing uh, during the day. So that's really what, what's, uh, that's a pleasure I mean, to see this, that this worked extremely well. The team for the Solar Impulse project believes such solar harnessing technology can be used everywhere in the world to power cars and homes. They even hope that it can finally wean mankind from fossil fuels. No, it's, a, it's an airplane that flies with no fuel at all. The solar panels give the electricity to the engines and to the batteries. So we can basically fly day and night perpetually. So today, the plane could fly from Switzerland to Brussels. It flies slowly because we need to save energy, but we had not a single drop of fuel. So that's an important message. With the new technologies now, if they were implemented everywhere, everywhere you know, you can put these new technologies for cars, for houses, for heating systems, for lighting, all that. If that was implemented in the world, you could save half of the fossil energy that we waste every day and produce half of the rest with renewable sources. So this is the type of message that we want to carry with Solar Impulse. But the ambitious goal still needs time to become reality. Project leaders have acknowledged that it has been a major challenge to fit such a slow flying plane into the commercial air traffic system. Solar Impulse now flies at an average speed of 70 kilometers per hour. So it's not an immediate threat to commercial jets, which can easily cruise at more than 10 times the speed. And is also picky of weather conditions. Well, uh, it's, it's mostly the wind that is important because it's so big and so light, it is very sensitive to wind conditions. Uh, uh, when it's on the ground, you can always blow it away if you would want to. It's, it's very, very sensitive to wind. And that's why they have been uh, planning this for weeks already. And every day uh, they looked at weather conditions, not only in Belgium, but only in Switzerland and the many hundreds of kilometers in between. Um, and they have decided uh, every day again and again uh, whether or not this will be a good moment. So a few days ago they have said that uh, Friday would be the, uh, the day to do it and uh, yesterday they have confirmed that the weather conditions would be perfect today. Friday's flight with Solar Impulse fifths. The project began in 2003 with a 10-year budget of 90 million euros. It has involved engineers from both Switzerland and Belgium.